Hi ho. Hello. I'm Ed, this is Chris. We're ready to drink. Drink, drink. We don't have anything in our glass, Chef. I wonder whose fault that is. Old North State Winery is where we work, and every week we feature wines from around the world so that we can better understand the wines of the Yakima Valley where we work and produce wines and make delicious foods. It's all, uh, it all centrifugal. And we love to guide people into the classic regions and maybe some regions that they don't know about to get delicious wines. So essentially just making you a better buyer when you're out at a restaurant or you know if you're at your local wine shop because it gets a little confusing out there a lot of labels out there there's a lot of labels and so we try to break them down for you um you know diligently we drink wine no, no after devotion. wine after wine so much devotion so that we can help you folks and your precious livers you're doing the lord's work mm -hmm. well we got a couple of frenchy ones today show so those of you that are tasting along um, in your pack, you'll, you'll have some food and a couple of beautiful bottles of wine. Uh, this is from Charles Vauve, and we've done their Vouvray, their Vouvray bubbles, which are just wonderful. It's Sancerre too. Yeah. And uh, this is Sancerre-ish for sure. This is <coughs> Thank you. Uh, another offering. They have a small portfolio, but Lucky for us, they are Vouvray specialists, which is Chenin Blanc, but they do offer us this Touraine, which is Sauvignon Blanc. Now, 100% Sauvignon Blanc, and of course, Touraine is like halfway between between the coasts where Muscadet is and Sancerre. So we're right in that Loire Valley, all that minerality. And Touraine really gives you uh, kind of a look into what I would say how how the Sauvignon Blancs developed through the whole Loire Valley. And it's really interesting to me how they each have their own individual identity. And of course, there's a lot more value in Touraine. Of course, Sancerre is certainly- Cha-ching. Yeah, certainly, but yeah, well, it's well worth it. I mean, oh yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. but just the, this is well worth it. Sure, and of course, Puy Fume, which is also <coughs> uh, regarded just as high esteem as uh, Sancerre, although it's I've, probably held even higher because it's more difficult to say. <laughs> there could the be. harder it is to pronounce, the more expensive it is. It could be. It's yeah. a real thing. Yeah. So, chef, uh, you know, you 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 know Saab Blanc, and this is all of the things Saab Blanc. There's no hiding this, is there? No, there's, there's no, no hiding it. I, I still find it fascinating that in the in the the foggy moors of the Loire. If you just close your eyes and sniff these, it's like the beach of of, of uh, Fuji. Yeah, all of the tropicals. Mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> this is even more tropical than normal. It's this like is... creamy pineapple. Yeah, <clears throat> bright lime, kiwi. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it's Shut so your bright. On. So Point bright, on. and of course. Uh, on the palate, we're talking about uh, of the intensity that that follows the nose, but then it. What I like about it is it is intense, but it it finishes so seamlessly soft. <clears throat> that's where the creamy pineapple. There's a mellow to it that's mm -hmm. yeah delicious, and the uh, the acid huge on the front, and like I said, mm -hmm. dissipates. Yes. So this could certainly be considered... Like a creamsicle. This yeah. Little, what is creamsicles? Remember those yeah. we were kids in mm -hmm. the summer? Yeah. This could be considered a front porch sipper or a food wine. There is some complexity of minerality here. Uh, Chef Chris and I tend to have pretty consistently have some type of Sauvignon Blanc at the chef's tables. Uh, it just is such a great food wine it in is. general. Depending you always on, find a great spot. Depending on where they're from, of course. Mm. So you always find a great spot. But there's, uh, there's you know, Saab Blancs from all over the world. Of course, I think nowadays most people associate New Zealand, particularly the Marlboro styles. And there's a little bit of that. You can kind of see how that grape 
Um, it, it's more amplified in New Zealand. This has some of that really amplified mm -hmm. in the beginning, but then it becomes more um, finesse, I would say, towards the back half. Absolutely. This is, <clears throat> I like the Marlboro uh, Savs, but I mean, obviously, this is a style that yeah. it's we're lean to. I mean, they're, they're very, uh, They're, they're, they're a little too overwhelming for me, glass mm -hmm. after glass. Yeah. You know, I love a glass right. of Marlboro yeah. uh, Sav Blanc, but I can't do a second one. It's, it's, it's this this is also, just it just hit me what I, I <coughs> couldn't figure out what the heck it was. I get a little pine sap on the nose. Ooh, yes. You know, yeah. Maybe it's because we're in the fall <coughs> and we're starting you know, having all this, uh, all, you know, everything kind of changes out there vegetation-wise, and yeah. uh, the pines yeah. might be getting a little sappy here soon. <coughs> Great call. Maybe, I don't know, it might be that thing, you know, we're, we're having some spectacular weather here in North Carolina, we're really enjoying it, and we're, you know, we're kind of bracing for the Yeah, it's been today. nice and dry, too, <laughs> so the leaves have been hanging on. You know, we haven't even dropped the leaves yet. That's what I'm saying. You know, maybe we get a storm or some rain and leaves fall off in 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're all up and, yeah. and they're full regalia. Yeah, we're third week in October and the leaves haven't dropped, which is not kind of weird. But uh, I'm not really looking forward to raking either. I'm not raking this year. I've, I've, it's now official. Um, <laughs> that it's very bad for your yard to to remove the leaves because they provide such a natural compost and protection for your grass and your beds. Um, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm, the only thing I'm gonna do is blow the leaves off the driveway and the walkways into the natural areas mm -hmm. in the yard because it's such a, <clears throat> it's not natural to do that. I mean, the, sure. the, the earth is designed to reciprocate without us being here and that's the leaves naturally creating that layer of protection for the winter so there'll be no leaf raking for me that's beautiful i'll just blow them off the walkway so it's safe but that's it this kind of falls into my theory about not having a yard at all well working towards it yeah working towards it also i don't think there's anything wrong what i might do if they get really bad i will blow them into the yard and mow them but not mulch them up, mulch them up mm -hmm. just so they, they, they compost quicker. But I'm not gonna bag them, I'm not taking them to the street. Uh, not gonna happen. Well, there you go. Cut the biggest culprit down last year, that tulip tree. It was in our driveway, it was getting ready to fall <laughs> into hated that thing. God. Well, I mean, it was like this. I mean, it was hanging on. I mean, one, one, the next storm, it was coming through the living room. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that thing drops six trillion leaves every year. So I don't think it's gonna be as bad. Well, cheers to that, Chef. Cheers. No raking. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, mm. you're welcome, Earth. So this to me kind of gives me that wintry feel or, you know, fall feel for a Sauvignon Blanc. <clears throat> Oftentimes, you know, we were talking about tropical flavors and, and things like that, but there is a minerality and greenness in here that really helps make it kind of a, a full season. Well, the pear season. apple thing could, could fall into this pretty easy. Sure. So yeah. that's certainly a fall mm -hmm. flavor, even, yeah. the, even if it's more Granny Smith, it's still yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, the au mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're there with these fall fruits as well as, as mm -hmm. the tropical. So it's not a stretch. Yeah, we've, uh, you know, we, a lot of times we box Sauvignon Blanc into being just for mm -hmm. summertime, and certainly we love it at summertime. But uh, I think there's a great point in this bottle, particularly uh, from Touraine, that there, they can be a year out. And, and um, you yeah, know, Chef, I want also want to talk about that cider you made. That was great. I got a bunch more apples in today, so yeah. there's going to be more coming. If y'all want some <coughs> really good cider, come up to the restaurant. Um, and we put some really high-end liquor in it, or you can just drink it like it is. Super delicious. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Charles Bo. We all, we love everything that you've ever presented to us here in North Carolina. That's tremendous. And we're gonna stay in France as a promise. <coughs> we're gonna head south, Chef. We we're up there north in the Loire Valley. Oh, we didn't talk about food. Sorry. <coughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a beautiful halibut. In. How about that? 
Sounds great. I think some halibut with this. How about uh, a little apple with that? Maybe a little little apple relish, yes. little apple something in that. Yeah. I think that's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, that sounds great. And uh, I think it won't be uh, you know it's substantial without being heavy. It'd be great with the weight of that mm -hmm. of that sablon. Yeah, I think uh, that sablon uh, is great for seafood, mm -hmm. um, all sorts of seafood. Did you see that one? Wow, that's, that was under a lot of pressure. The, the, the orange was pretty low on that. Smells good though. Sometimes, you know, people ask about the ullage, why do they have that gap in there? You know, if you don't have the proper gap, you're going to have that create a suction there. And of course, if there's even less, they, the corks can pop out when things get hot or cold. So ullage is important. I think we're good. Smells great, so we're fine. Um, you never know when you see something weird. Uh, your nose is the best indicator of something going to be good. You know, we actually had a corked bottle at the show table last mm -hmm. week. And you caught it. Yeah, I caught it, thank God. Because I don't taste, per se, every one. I've tasted them. But not but, each uh, bottle. You're not going to care yeah, for man, every bottle. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, just came across one that was slightly corked, just enough to... Upset. Well, that was one you had decanted, so you, you, you got in front of that. That yeah. was impressive. So, um, yeah, you trust your nose, folks. And, of course, a light corking is the hardest thing to discover. And what the, the problem is is that it really mutes the fruit. And until you really tasted what the wine's supposed to taste like beside a corked wine, it won't be that you know if it's a new wine to you you don't really know what the new that wine is supposed to taste like but if you've had it before it's really easy to identify corking because there's an expectation and it's usually really muted to fruit for me that is uh the giveaway plus of course the corky nose but uh we are safe here and uh we are like i said we're heading down to the room and chef this is one of your favorite parts of the southern Rome the Ventu. Love the Cote de Ventu. Oh, yeah, and this is uh, from Unam. Um, they make uh, all kinds of delicious things. Uh, chef, would you not agree? Could not agree more. Uh, these, it would so be they, obnoxious how much I would agree. Right, so we're talking about Grenache-based wines here. And generally speaking, we think of Grenache, Syrah, Mouvedre, and we got two out of the three on this one. Though. We're Grenache, Syrah, and so. So it's a GSC. GSC. And uh, uh, we love the Sinso. Yeah, yeah. So this is um, something that um, it's, a, it's a small variant. Um, you, you'll probably <coughs> notice in your glass that this isn't quite as um, purple, you know, because it doesn't have Mouvedre in it. And I find that Mouvedre just really uh, kind of shows itself more so in color. Um, if you're comparing it to Senso from my personal uh, experience. And I generally, Senso gives me higher tone pepper notes pepper. on the nose. And I feel like uh, that is probably the reason why it's in here. Because this, to me, uh, particularly um, this particular vintage, is really pepper driven on the nose, which I love. It's a fabulous pepper. And <clears throat> I love the, <clears throat> I think, uh, Ventu wines tend to be more uh, bold and peppery rather than bright and fruity anyway. And the Senso just rings it home. Mm -hmm. It's really fabulous. Yeah, we have a we have a <clears throat> elegance here. There's a finesse. The Grenache is absolutely polished. Yeah, it's it's really prevalent here. Not surprisingly, um, oh. you know, this is a only three years old, but. Um, it, it just seems so integrated and of course you know you know vintage after vintage 15 16 17 18 19 20 have been so fantastic in the southern room these the value is there you know i don't, I don't know that this um, needs aging but you certainly could uh but it is drinking so beautifully right now it's silky yeah we, we've done a lot of sensos lately from from south, south africa, africa. Yeah, and delicious. so it to me i've merely dialed in on senso and it's really interesting how um such a small percent i think it's only five percent of senso really shows 
And people often wonder why, like, why do they have like one or two or five percent of something in a wine? Well, you know, if you're really dialed in, you'll you'll understand why um, it, that they're in there because the ingredients will show. Just like when you're making, well, a it's dish. just like you know, you're not going to do equal parts salt and pork. I mean, you know, the, mm -hmm. these things are a little goes a long way, <clears throat> and you know, and um, we've had a lot of South African wines where the senso is being blended with cab. Uh, it's, you know, it, I love it with Grenache. It has such a different mouthfeel um, in, in this region. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fabulous. But, you know, a blending grape is a tool. You know, you're, you're tweaking. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're just trying to, like finishing with a pat of butter or <clears throat> a little bit of white pepper at the end just to give something a lift. But you don't want it to speak for the dish, just like you don't want that to speak for the wine. You're getting a nice um, kind of unctuous, kind of earthy, meaty uh, addition from the Syrah. So put the three together and you really have something special. So, you know, I'm, I'm always preaching GSM, GSM, know your GSMs, because that's what it is in the Southern Rome. But there are certainly um, exceptions to that rule. Uh, and so I would, this is a great example of a GSC in terms of since so uh, carrying on could also certainly be a C for you, you a lot. Well. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, this in this case uh, we are talking about since so and you know world class producer Chef Chris and I have used their their wines at the chef's table multiple times. It's a great example, you know, of what really high end in my opinion French wine mm -hmm. is at affordable prices. You know, it's the quintessential weekly French wine. Yeah. And then yeah. not only the profile, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the price point, you know, they're not supposed to be, these aren't supposed to be birthday wines. These are supposed to be wines you drink <clears throat> all throughout the week with all kinds of dishes. These are supposed to be just part of your life. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and this just, it just yeah. checks every box. It's just absolutely stunning, delicious. Right, and so with that, um, being said what kind of food do you think you would be throwing at this particular gsc now of course this doesn't really fit the the mold of our usual <coughs> gsms it is it, it's it's not far off but it's no, a little, no, bit, a little no, bit more finesse I, I completely agree and what i kind of had in my head coming down is not we're not going to do so i do doing a new dish uh tonight where i take pork tenderloin and i cut it out flat <clears throat> Caramelized onions, add in a local fromage, uh, a little uh, lusty monk mustard and some egg, and I stuff it and roll that in a roulade, wrap it in call fat to sear it and Ooh. roast it. So I think that, I think yeah. that's going to sing with this. Absolutely. You know, whenever we're talking about Southern France, you know, and I wanted to mention mustard to you, and pork. what I've been thinking about since the weather got to slip. Uh oh, you need some crazy. Oh, it's so it's funny about, you it's said about that. that time. I watched the video the other night where they were suggested reels mm -hmm. or whatever. Yep. It was a dude mm -hmm. making cassoulet, mm -hmm. and I was like, wow. When I think that's about great. great call. But um, yeah, that the dish that you're talking about um, has those kind of rustic, earthy elements that I'm kind of starting to crave. I already, you know, I just did my first pot roast in months. Um, you know, I've been starting my soup production, and uh, you know, just crave. I crave. want the hearty food. Is it's? I might be cheating a little bit. Oh, uh, you're not. I made turkey white chili white. already. Yeah. I made beef and cabbage stew already. Yeah. No, you're not. But cheating. those 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 southern French kind of hearty dishes, uh, that that is going to be very reflective of. Of the you know and and, and it's going to pair beautifully with this wine. I just know it. Um, uh, gosh, I wish I had a piece right now. You're good. We'll have a we'll, we'll have some. So if I had it ready, I would have brought it down. Well, place. it's been a madhouse around here. We've been uh, it's been nuts. We've been uh, yeah. Well, we just got we through, we got through uh, the big autumn lease festival, or hundreds of thousands of people were in Mount Airy, and we had a wonderful. Drama-free uh, Drama holiday. Free. Event, I'll tell you what, our staff they really a plus, rose, a a plus. rose to the occasion. A plus, five star. They worked uh, worked <coughs> to the point of pain, and and they they 
kept coming back for more. Back for more, it was absolutely wonderful, and uh, that that's great. We have, uh, yeah, we've done chef tables and all kinds of wonderful things. Chef, we got that big Italian wine dinner coming up on November the seventh. There's just so much to look forward to. Chef tables, and of course, our every single week we're doing these videos. And if you want to do this in person. We do four wines in person on Thursday nights at 6 p.m. right here in downtown. It's so much fun. It is, it really is. So, uh, and not to mention our marketplace is booming. We have all kinds of meats and cheeses and wines to grab and go if you just want to go have a picnic or you know, just want to uh, kind of a elevated, relaxing night. It's a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. I know we like to eat like that. Yeah. Just kind of graze, drink wine and graze. Fan no, no must. Fancy salamis and fancy cheeses. Can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm going to go get some right now, so. I hope we don't run out of wine. <laughs> that will never happen on my watch. So. Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. Oh, all right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, never seen that before. <clears throat> I was kidding. That was documented, by the way. So we have two beautiful French wines. We're up in the Loire Valley from Terrain, um, Charles Bogue, and like I said, Vouvray Specialist Bubbles, also a wonderful bubble specialist. And uh, this is their Sauv Blanc. And then Unam, uh, Chateau Unam, which is just, you know, like I said, a quintessential Southern Rhone producer of all things delicious. But this happens to be the Ventu, and we love it too. Kind of we hope that you do too. <clears throat> it's perfect. If you, if you have any requests of wines that you would like us to review, please comment. We'd be happy to track some down for you and talk about those because we get it's to always fun. Them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we get to yeah, drink them. That. And that's always wonderful. I want to thank all of you loyal followers <clears throat> that, that watch weekly and you know, you, you know and all the people that share and, and, and tell their friends about it. It means the world to yeah. us. And we Thank hope you. everybody is safe and well out there. We got a lot of people out there with a lot of battles <clears throat> going on. And we let you know that we're thinking about you. And uh, we hope to see you in the restaurant soon. Everybody hang in there. We love you. All it's, right. It's going to be good. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your wine and enjoy your snacks. <laughs>